You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available in the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. This episode is sponsored by Demand Derivatives, a startup futures exchange and clearinghouse trading the world's major assets in a creative new way. You already trade on an exchange. Here is your chance to own one. Before they approach large strategic partners for funding, the pioneering team at Demand Derivatives launched a crowdfunding portal so that regular traders have the chance to buy shares. Learn more and become a part of this revolutionary fintech project now at demandderivatives.com slash crowdfunding. Bitcoin, Ether, Ripple, Litecoin, and more. Cryptocurrencies and other digital assets are taking the financial world by storm. This exploding market provides everything a savvy trader needs. Volatility, volume, and liquidity provided you know how to find it that's where we come in welcome to the crypto rundown each week we'll break down the latest trading activity trends and developments on everything from coins to tokens futures and even otc options if it's moving the crypto markets then you'll find it on the crypto rundown this program is brought to you by genesis volatility also known as gvol home of institutional grade crypto options analytics whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit gvol.io. That's G V O L dot I O. Now it's time to dive into the exploding world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time for the Crypto Rundown. All right, everybody. That music means it is time once again, one final time here for 2020. Yep, it is time for the Crypto Rundown, the program where we break down everything outside of what we talk about usually on our other programs here on the network. We're not going to talk about Apple and Tesla and spy options and ski all that good stuff. We're going to talk about... Bitcoin and ETH and all the good stuff going on out there and the options, the volume, the volatility, the skew, the OI, all that good stuff, as well as, of course, the spot and the futures and everything else you guys are trading out there. My name is Mark Longo from the optionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, on the aforementioned network reminding you, particularly for this show, we get such an influx of people who are new to the options world completely. They're mostly coming from the crypto side to this program. So, A, if the stuff we talk about here on the show is a little over your head, make sure you check out the rest of our content, particularly our Education Wednesday content, Options Bootcamp, Options Playbook Radio, good places for you to start if you're scratching your head at some of those terms. And, of course, if you like what you hear for this show, for anything we do on the network, keep those reviews coming. This year, 2020, it's been a crazy year, but it's about every metric. So, by all means, those reviews more important than ever to help all the influx of new people coming to the world of options and, indeed, the world of crypto to discover this program and, indeed, the network. So, we do love to hear from you guys. And let's see who we're hearing from on the old program today. One final time in 2020, it is time to roll out the crypto hot seat. Forget about cold storage. It's time to turn up the heat on thought leaders from the world of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. It's time to take their place on the, the crypto, crypto hot seat. seat. All right. Welcome to the Crypto Hot Seat, the portion of the program where we welcome on guests from throughout the world of crypto trading and indeed beyond and proceed to pick their brains for the benefit of you, the listener. Next up on the old hot seat is a newcomer to the program and indeed to the network. She is Mickey Coonan, the head of sales and trading over there at Paradigm. Mickey, welcome to the Crypto Rundown program. 
Thank you so much, Mark. I'm so happy to be here. And Mickey, as we are wont to do with all of our first timers here on the network, why don't you go ahead and give our audience a little bit of an overview of your background in the financial space as well as what the heck it is you guys do over there at Paradigm. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. Um, so a brief background about myself, and I know you just gave that intro about new newcomers to the crypto space. I am kind of relatively new to the crypto space. I was a vault trader in the traditional space for about 10 years, trading U.S. indexes and soft commodity derivatives um, for Wolverine Trading. So a proprietary trading group based in Chicago. Um, I started off on the floor of the old Merck, then I moved over to SIBO, and then I moved upstairs um, trading those products as well. Um, so I came to Paradigm the summer of 2019, and I really came over with my trading background to kind of be that bridge between traders and the products that we build. Um, so that goes back and forth, you know, lo- learning their workflows in this new digital asset space and kind of seeing where maybe inefficiencies, inefficiencies lack and where we can kind of fill those efficiencies and kind of build those out and then also educate them about maybe potentially new workflows that we're creating. Um, so what are these workflows, I'm sure you're asking, that Paradigm is creating? Um, let me give you a brief background of, of that as well. Um, so the easiest way to understand Paradigm is that we are a single point of access to multi-dealer block liquidity for listed futures and options across some of the largest digital crypto uh, exchanges in the world. So Deribit, Bit.com, and CME are our current integrations. We have many other uh, venue integrations on our roadmap, and we're so excited to announce those in the new year. Um, so we're creating this point of access being venue agnostic, exchange agnostic to, you know, where the marketplace is demanding support and volume for all of these, these, you know, crypto products. Um, so while we're creating, you know, access to as many exchanges as you can, you want to trade, we're also kind of building out, um, product agnostic platforms. So right now we support options and futures on Paradigm, trading options and futures. Um, but we're also building out support for spot trading, digital asset loan negotiations. Um, so again, my point, I feel like I've repeated this, but you know, I, I, I just love that we're building this single point of access to trade as many different options or products or, or exchanges that you want to trade at. And, you know, through creating this platform, I feel one of our biggest strengths that we also have created is this network of traders. Um, We have over 290 counterparties on our platform. This includes hedge funds, OTC desks, lenders, uh, market makers, family offices. I could go on and on. But, you know, by default, we've kind of created this counterparty discovery tool that that kind of lacked, you know, like uh, without coming onto Paradigm, I feel like all of these counterparties might not have connected with these new liquidity pools to trade these products. So, you know, we're aggregating the marketplace, kind of making it more efficient. Um, There's no more segregation of negotiating with this trader on Skype or this trader on WhatsApp. Um, we're bringing it all to Telegram and then uh, all to Paradigm. And then in addition to just, you know, chat as our core and kind of negotiating those trades, um, we're streamlining and automating those execution workflows. We're also rolling out our API very soon. So um, there's going to be 24-7 automated pricing on on Paradigm. Um, And then, you know, everything that we build is kind of with the institutional trader or professional trader in mind. Um, Because technically, every trade that goes through Paradigm is a block trade. Uh, There are minimum size requirements. Those requirements, of course, are set by the exchange. But by default, these sizes are larger. And by default, they're they're filtering out the smaller retail client. Um, So we have larger retail clients, of course. And then like I said, professional or institutional traders. Um, we are building tools to allow for complex strategies, so multi-leg strategies um, that you weren't able to execute in a single transaction before. And then also even you know, complex traders might want to execute delta neutral, so combining options and futures in the same transaction um, that is you know, something that we're very proud to have built on Paradigm as well. Um, so... So, yeah, I just feel like, 
the, you know, creating this single point of access to this huge network of professional traders, um, as many different venues that you want to trade on, all these different products that you want to block your, your trade into. Um, and it's been awesome to see in this past month, of course, with, you know, the, the current activity and, and the huge rally that we've seen, um, some of our volume has been the strongest this month. Um, and I think that's really solidifying our place in the, in the marketplace that, that, you know, when the screens are thin and, and, and stuff widens out, where are you going to get, go to get these larger size trades done? Um, and that's where we come in. And it's really been, you know, satisfying to see that in, in this time of craziness and market rally, um, that our volumes have kind of exploded as well. Wow, a lot to unpack there, <laughs> Mickey. Before we dive into all that really quickly, I have to know it's quite a transition from down in the trading pits with Wolverine to going up here on the screens and trying to facilitate these blocks now uh, on Paradigm. So I'm, I'm curious for you, what was that inflection point? What was it that brought you over from the traditional world of S&P and index volatility and said, hey, you know, maybe I want to try my hand at, the, at these crypto things? Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like it's kind of similar to like everybody. It's you see this. I don't know what to call it. Like it reminded me kind of of the OEX back in the day, like um, not the wild, wild west, but just everything. There's so much opportunity for growth, whether it's the tools we're building, whether it's the edge people are capturing. Um, it's just like an exciting time, innovative time. Um, and to come from such a strong traditional background um, with all these tools that I'm excited to bring over into the crypto space and kind of, you know, bridge that gap and, and provide these tools, I saw, saw it as a great opportunity. And I, I, I was so excited to, to come over into the crypto side. Yeah. OEX, I like it. Old school, not even SPX. Just go yeah. straight, straight out to the old school days of the OEX, the old 1.5. You don't hear much yeah. about that anymore. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> You don't hear much about that anymore out there. But let, let's get into that. You kind of mentioned the crypto resurgence. We're going to get into all that a little bit, of course, in the Bitcoin breakdown. Quite the resurgence it has been. But walk us through right now. Our listeners like to know what, what the hot thing is going up out there. And of course, this recent just explosion to the upside has certainly, A, awakened a lot of people to the Bitcoin space who maybe had been sleeping on it back when it was threatening 3,000 in the other direction during the depths of the crypto winter, but also bringing in a lot more paper. So right now, you guys are facilitating a lot of the big blocks out there. Are pretty much everyone, are they just gobbling up calls, Mickey? Or what are the big trades you're seeing going up? What's, what's the hot action on Paradigm and Bitcoin right now? Yeah, it was it was interesting to see earlier um, in the month and in, in November. And, you know, all this information, of course, is available on Genesis Volatility. Um, I, you know, usually we don't talk about specifics on the platform, of, of, of course, because of counterparty confidentiality. But um, in the overall marketplace, yeah, there was more activity in calls blocked earlier in the month and then in November. Um, and then now it's just, I feel like, overall equally weighted calls and puts, um, just overall activity that has, has risen um, for block trades. I like how you termed it earlier, a counterparty discovery tool. It's not something you think about in traditional world of options and derivatives or even stocks. You know, you just go out to a firm like your old firm, Wolverine, and say, hey, provide me some liquidity. And, and they do the price discovery for you. In the crypto world, not so much. You kind of look a little bit farther afield to find that liquidity. So, so where are you guys going to build out this network of crypto liquidity providers? The people who are out there responding to these RFQs that you're putting out into the world, are they a lot of the, some of the traditional players? Maybe not the Wolverines, but some of the other players out there? Or are you having to go farther afield, maybe finding the, the quote-unquote crypto holders and say, hey, are you guys interested in, in responding to RFQs on our platform? How laborious has it been for you guys to go out and really build this network? And, and how much farther afield beyond the traditional financial liquidity providers did you have to go? Yeah, so it's kind of a combination of everything. Um, we started off, you know, really by word of mouth and and we you know we're so grateful to be integrated with these with these clients from early on um that they kind of talk to their other institutional friends and then you know as you see i feel like a lot of the traditional finance guys have kind of left and started their own operation in the crypto space and so it's kind of morphed into uh you know both 
these old school traditional guys who are who are tiptoeing into the crypto space, you know, new funds starting. Um, and then everybody kind of comes on and they're like, yeah, we want to be takers. But if I see something good, can I also make a price? So it's interesting because we don't, you know, we don't label anybody directly or pigeonhole them. You have to be a market maker. You have to be a taker. Um, so it's just like an open network that if even if you usually speculate on trades and you are the one initiating RFQs. Um, if you see an RFQ that's sent onto our platform and you, you have interest, um, you are welcome to make a price. So that's really the beauty of the platform that it's kind of an open network um, and just creating the most efficiency and liquidity pools that we can provide. And we have a pretty broad audience on this program, including a lot of people coming to it who don't know much about uh, options or derivatives or indeed much outside of the crypto space. And maybe these terms we're throwing around, they have no idea what the heck we're talking about, like an RFQ. So maybe walk some of our newer listeners through the process, Mickey. Someone, let's say an asset manager comes to your platform and they want to buy a thousand out of the money calls in Bitcoin right now. Walk our listeners through the process of how all that unfolds. Yeah, of course. So, um, so let like your example. Let's say somebody wants to buy a thousand out of the money calls. You know, maybe their first step would be to go to the screen. But of course, there's not going to be a thousand out of the money calls offered on the screen, and they have to go pretty deep into the order book to you know even get partially filled on that size, maybe. So what we do is, you know, a block trade, these larger, chunkier trades, everybody that's on our platform, whether, you know, they're looking to strictly provide liquidity, do a combination of both, they are willing to provide liquidity for those sizes. Um, so an RFQ means request for quote. So on our application, we have a combination of chat and then also this RFQ execution workflow. Um, so you kind of build like an, not an order ticket, but an RFQ ticket. So what you're looking to get a price on, um, you select the venue. And right now, as I mentioned, we're integrated at Darebit, CMEbit.com. So you can trade products at any of those that you have an account with. Um, so you select the venue, the product. And then you just build all the details. So if you would select the expiration, the strike, the instrument, whether it's a call or a put, um, and then the size. So you don't put any indication of price that you're looking for. And you just simply get, you, you can blast it to one counterparty if you have a good relationship with them on, the, on our platform. Or you can blast it to as many counterparties, if not all the counterparties on Paradigm. And everybody kind of responds back to you. We ag we aggregate them um, and list them in order of best pricing. And then you can, you can execute directly within Paradigm. We push that trade. So let's say someone comes back with a price. You're happy with that price. All you simply do is click buy or sell, just as if you're clicking on the screen. But what we do is we push that that price and that RFQ that you created into your account at that settlement ven venue instantaneously. Um, so you go around the order book. We are not influencing the screen prices or affecting, you know, any, any order book pricing. Um, but ultimately it settles on that, you know, requested exchange. So let's say you requested it at Deribit. Um, we would push it into your Deribit account. We would block it into your Deribit account. Um, so we're simply the tech layer. Um, all your capital, all your margin, everything is handled by Deribit. Um, we are just the infrastructure and and the 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 the, the piece that pus pushes the information to Deribit. Now, one of the ongoing talking points of this program since it launched, all coming up on two years ago now, is what are the institutional players? What do they think about this space? Are they interested in? I know when it raced up to 20,000 initially, almost back about exactly three years ago now, there was a lot of institutional interest. Then it seemed to wane in the depths of the crypto winter and slowly but surely it seems like it's starting to have a resurgence out there right now. But you guys have the data. You guys are putting up the actual trades and you're also dealing with all the institutional counterparties and, and dealing with their inquiries. So over the last few months, as we've seen this explosion north of 20,000 and indeed beyond here, what have you seen on the institutional front? Have you seen a, a huge uptick in demand? Has the mind share and the interest really exploded along with the price? Or is it still a kind of business as usual over there? No, absolutely. I would say it's exploded with the price. Um, and having these tools in place have really, you know, justified their their inkling to kind of get into this, this, uh, this space. Um, even like, you know, I would say 
the summer of last year, people, you know, institutions were very hesitant. And now all of a sudden they're coming out of the woodwork. They're kind of resurfacing the conversations that we had with them like a year ago. And they're like, hey, let's pick this up again. You know, we want to we want to start onboarding and, and becoming active on Paradigm. Um, they're obviously seeing all the volume and the activity that we do on us. And um, it's just, you know, solidified and justified their, their reasoning for coming into this space. Um, and I think that's, you know, what we're trying to build with these institutions and professional traders in mind. We're trying to, you know, build these tools to kind of make them feel comfortable. You know, they're used to the, you know, the having these tools in the traditional space um, and, and building them for the crypto space just made sense. Um, so, yeah. And you mentioned you connect to Deribit. Obviously, they're the big dog out there. But CME is growing and coming online. You mentioned you guys connect to them as well. You know, one of the inspirations for CME launching their products is that here was a, a lit listed regulated venue that people have heard of in the traditional financial space that people know about. They know it's not going to vanish in the near future. They know there's actual trading floor space and office space right here in Chicago. They can go to it. They can see it. They can touch it with their hands, which is reassuring in a world where things are somewhat nebulous. Uh, some times, but the volume has kind of been slow to materialize. What are you guys seeing in terms of interest from the institutions on, on the CME products? They're a little bit beefier, a little bit larger. They're obviously a 5X product versus the traditional kind of one-to-one product over there at Deribit. Are you seeing more interest in that platform or is it still pretty much all Deribit all the time? Correct. Yeah. Yeah, it is beefier. The, the multiplier is five to one. Um, as we have have are having conversations with these institutions, um, you know, I think they're interested in both CME and Deribit. I think, you know, Deribit is obvious ha- that has the most uh, volume, but these institutions are, you know, also want to trade at CME. So I'm hoping that with more institutions coming on, um, it's just going to grow the pie. Um, I don't think it's going to take away from Deribit. I think it's just going to grow the pie of the volume in the space. And, um, you know, I think CME will grow as well. Well, Mickey, we have to keep on rolling into our next segment. But before we go, perhaps there's, you mentioned these tools. If you want to give our audience a little bit of a hint, a little bit of a tease of what's coming down the pike from you guys and the team over there at Paradigm, now is the time. The floor is yours, madam. Sure. Yeah. So we're excited to be rolling out our API, as I mentioned before. So we're going to have automated pricing. We're also rolling out our mobile application. So you can trade anytime um, from your phone. Um, and then, like I mentioned, so many new exchanges that are coming on to Paradigm, um, new products, um, you know, so really creating that one place to trade all of these other places um, with that efficiency for settlement execution. So if you have any questions, you can uh, reach out to us. Um, we have a Telegram group. It's Trade Paradigm. Um, or my Telegram handle is um, short underscore ball. So feel free to reach out to me directly as well. There you go. To reach out to her directly. Mickey, we appreciate you joining us, taking the time out of this crazy market right now to join us on the Crypto Rundown. We'll look forward to seeing how all these RFQs and the APIs and the new tools, how they unfold in the marketplace in the coming month. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, now it's time to keep on rolling, break down some of that crazy action. It is time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. It's time to explore the latest trending activity, trends, and developments across the world's leading crypto market. It's time for the Bitcoin Breakdown. All right, everybody, welcome to the Bitcoin Breakdown. Oh, there is a lot to break down this week. So many things happening, prices and levels that we thought were just absurd, let's say even a week ago, are now online and indeed quite relevant. (laughs) Coming into showtime, we saw Bitcoin was at a little bit north of the 27,000 level. Yes, I said that correctly, listeners. 27,111 to be precise. Looks like it's given a little bit of that back up now. Now it's just ticked. Right below the 27,000 level, 26,997. That still puts it up a substantial margin over 4,000 points. About 4,300 from our last show listeners. Coming into the end of last show, Bitcoin was at 22,788. <laughs> we kicked it off today at 27,111. Oh, how the worm has turned. Oh, how these strikes that seems outlandish, indeed absurd. Not too long ago, 
are suddenly looking genius, in, indeed well-timed and prescient out there. Let, let's get into it. Let's break it all down. Of course, a lot of these metrics come at you courtesy of our friends over there at Genesis. Check them out for yourselves. Gvol, G-V-O-L dot I-O is the place to go to kick the tires and light the fires for yourselves. If you do that, you can see some of these cool hour-by-hour analytics that are not really available on any other platform, at least none that I've seen out there. And looking at the one-hour volatility, which again is a great metric for for Bitcoin in particular, because it does change so much hour by hour. It peaked, again, coming into Showtime. Last show, it was about 63 almost 64%, so still pretty active, but a little bit quieter. And then it peaked throughout this past crazy mad week on the 27th, yesterday, at 92.34. That's probably around the level when Bitcoin broke through the 28,000 level ever so briefly there yesterday, so just closing in on 30,000. How, how, how insane is that to say out loud? Yet that's where we are, listeners. They hit a 92, 92.34 to be precise, yesterday, and it hit 90 again. Well, it hit 90 again on the show a couple weeks ago as well on the 17th, and then uh, it bottomed out pretty aggressively right before that. The vol, of course, on Christmas Day, not so much, down to about a 75%, so a huge swing just inch a week. And then coming into the show today, we're at about a little bit north of 80 right now, 82 and a quarter. So huge swings in volatility, almost 20 points just net show to show here, an inch a week, about 30 points. So big swings from an hourly vol perspective, which again, product is threatening a 100 vol. You expect big moves out there. And that's pretty much what you got. One hour skew, that 30, 20 skew. Remember, they kind of take that full strip. So not just the 25 delta put, not just 25 delta call, but taking all of it together. Again, this, all these metrics coming at you from the Darabit order book because that is, of course, the big dog out there. That one hour 30-20 skew peaked at about a 14 even on the 27th. So yesterday, uh, last week, last show was at about nine and three quarters. And then it's come off quite a bit since yesterday. It's at eight and a quarter now. So nine and three quarters a week ago, got up to about 14 yesterday and then down to about eight and a quarter right now. So big shifts in skew as well. A lot of that, of course, coming on the fact that a lot of OI has, let's say, changed <laughs> since last week. Uh, last show, the hourly OI, so how much OI was open in terms of contracts at that moment, peaked this week at, so last week on the show was 212,000. It peaked at 238,000 on Christmas Day, and then it pretty much dropped off that same day <laughs> down to 154,000. Remember, we said a lot of DS is open, and once DS rolls off the board, it's going to change a lot of things, and that's pretty much exactly what we saw, a lot of DS rolling off the board. Last week, an intraday drop of OI from almost 240,000 down to 154,000, almost 90,000 contract shift in just hourly OI just within a few hours. So that's, that's, that's a huge drop. That might be the largest, if not the largest we've seen. I'll have to go back and, and check to make sure. But that's a huge intraday swing. Uh, coming into today's show now, it hasn't really recovered that OI. It's at about 174 thousand right now so it's gained about twenty thousand contracts since that nader on christmas day but nowhere near the two hundred thirty eight thousand it was at not too long ago let's look at the oi how that translates into some notional uh, open interest as well and we got some big numbers out there remember if you look at across the broad spectrum of venues derrick is obviously still the big dog but you add in you know your ledger x and your okex's and everything else cme out there we saw them getting north of five billion a few times and on the last show deribit was at about oh five point six billion this week or intra week actually we threatened seven billion we got very close to it on the twenty fourth about six point eight billion when you add up all the venues so that includes deribit was at about five point six billion and then we had a bunch of other names out there adding up about another one point two billion out there CME around Close to about 250 million or so. Okay, yeah, similar levels out there. So add all those up together, you get close to seven billion, which is a huge amount of OI. And of course, that all went away <laughs> the next day. We were below five billion pretty much the next a few hours later, about four and a half billion net OI. So a ton of OI came off the board as D rolled off the board. We said it before, we'll say it again. Crypto derivatives, they love a quarterly. And those quarterlies, when the D rolled off the board, a lot of OI went with it. So we kind of find ourselves in a new paradigm to <laughs> reference our guest from earlier on the show in terms of what we're seeing out there from an open interest and a volume perspective out there. Coming into today's show, we're seeing, again, OI has changed quite a bit. Uh, overall, OI, about 112,000 contracts open on the call front versus about 62,000 open 
on the puts. Again, those numbers much lower than we saw this time last week. Let's look at the volume. Active week, but not quite as crazy as the week before. Remember, we were talking about on the 17th last show hitting uh, 1.1 billion on the 17th. So that was pretty much an all time high out there. Didn't quite hit that this week, but still had some pretty active weeks. 780 million worth of notion on the 27th, 673 million worth of notion on the 21st. So on our last show last week. Uh, so again, not quite as high as, as the week before, where we saw, again, not just 1.1 billion on the 17th, but about 880 million on the 16th, 661 million on the 18th. So. Not quite in that ballpark there, but pretty pretty aggressive nonetheless. Take take that previous week out of the equation, and then, yeah, you have new records. But <laughs> that week does put things in a little bit different light out there. The biggest trades of the week, again, out there on Darabit. We look at a lot of different ways you can break this down. Premium, you know, how much is going on from that perspective. You know, we like contracts more. So let's look at the largest contract size trade. That would come up on the 24th. One of the largest was a 400 lot of the Jan 20,000 puts. That went up on December 27th, 0.0185 Bitcoin. If you're wondering about that, that's a 99 volatility. <laughs> 20,000 strike just not that long ago. It seemed like an optimistic upside call bet. And now it's a hedge for puts pretty much. <laughs> 400 lot. Breaking back to the 20,000 strike out here. So that's where we find ourselves today on the show, listeners. In terms of open interest, again, this number has changed markedly. All of these is pretty much gone now. And that was the big dog. Now we have Jan leading the dance with about 63,000 contracts, followed by March at number two with 34,000 and everything else, kind of a, a pale shadow behind it. We used to talk about strikes. We used to laugh, listeners, at that 36,000 strike. What, what an absurd trade. That trade looks amazing now. <laughs> it's still number one, about 20,000 contracts still open. So that strike is still open for size out there. Followed by the 20,000 strike number two at about 12,500 contracts open. And then, yes, the 52,000 strike number three with about 11,000 contracts open on that strike. So we have some outlandish strikes open. But, hey, we mocked the 36,000 strike. And now when it hit 28,000, it was pretty much equidistant between 20,000 and 36,000. It had the same amount of distance to go (laughs) to hit that 36,000 strike as it did to retrace back to 20,000. So who thought we'd be in that situation? Well, clearly this person probably did, but outside of them, not many people. And yet, uh, interesting stuff. The saga of those, we'll have to dig into those a little bit more, looking at the price action, how they've performed. Delta-wise, they've certainly looked good, but Vega-wise, I'm sure they look very good. So we'll get into all that skew-wise probably uh, coming up in January once we see these things roll off and we have a sense for how they perform. But interesting trade to analyze. I think we'll do a little bit more of that coming up on the show, going out to CME land, the place where the Paradigm folks said they're starting to pay more attention. Their clients are starting to pay more attention. A pretty active week out there. Thursday, not so much. 32 contracts. Friday, obviously closed. But Wednesday was a big dog out there. 406 contracts. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that's a 5X contract. You're talking 2,000 plus contracts going up that day. So that, that's a decent clip for CME. We haven't seen numbers that high in a while. Tuesday, about 200. Monday, 356. So a pretty active week. When it comes down to CME on the options side, decent numbers on the futures side as well. Friday, obviously closed. Thursday, about 6,000. Again, light day heading into the holiday. Wednesday, about 14,000. Tuesday, almost 19,000. And Monday, about 19,000 as well. So pretty decent paper out there on CME. Unfortunately, not the same story over there on Backed, our old friend, the Backed Volume Bot. Looking at their summary here of 340 contracts. That's down 81%. And a pale shadow of their high of 18,718 that was traded back on September 17th. So they were putting up some numbers just three months ago. And now that seems to have trailed off quite a bit. So not sure what's going on over there in Backland. We'd like to find it out in the future on the show. Maybe in 2021 we'll get some folks in Backed on to pick their brains a little bit. But now it's time to keep on rolling and explore the altcoin universe. It's time to move beyond Bitcoin and find out what's moving the rest of the crypto marketplace. It's time to boldly venture into the altcoin universe. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Let's explore the altcoin universe. Let's start in top 10 land. Number 10, Chainlink at about 5 billion, pretty much even. Number 9, Binance Coin, 5.1 billion. Number 8, Cardano, 5.3 billion. Remember, standard caveat applies. Take all these 
overall market caps with a pretty hefty grain of salt, but the rankings have a little bit more value, I think. Number seven, Polkadot, 5.4, almost 5.5 billion. Number six, Bitcoin Cash, 6.8 billion. Number five, Litecoin, 8.8 billion. Number four, yes, I said number four, our old friend XRP. Oh, how the mighty have fallen below tether now. Back to number four, 12.9 billion. A rough week for XRP. Listeners, everything else is off to the moon. XRP going back down. Uh, Tether, number three, at about 20, almost 21 million. 21 billion, excuse me. Uh, ETH, number two, 84.5 billion. Number one, the big dog, Bitcoin. Half (laughs) half a trillion dollars. $503 billion. Yes, you know, it wasn't that long ago on the show. I mocked one of our guests for saying it might be a $1 trillion asset, yet here we go. Halfway there, listeners. That's uh, the year that has been. <laughs> 2020. Let's get on out into Let's get out to number two, the, the other big dog outside of Bitcoin, which is, of course, ETH. Man, what a week for ETH. It was 610 and a half on our last show. Come into today's show. It was almost 742, 741, 97. It puts it up about 131 and a half handles from last show. Let's talk some one-hour vol. That's interesting out there as well. Last show. It was 86%, and it had peaked coming into today's show. Actually, was the peak at about 105 and a half as of about half an hour ago. So a lot of vol still to be found out there in ETH land. The one-hour 30-20 skew. Last show was about 12.65, and it peaked again today, about 24 and a half. So pretty much double what it was this time last week on the show. So a lot of movement out there in ETH land. You know, a lot of this, of course, reflects the fact. I mentioned it for Bitcoin, but it even holds truer for And it's much more resonant for ETH because I mentioned it to Greg from Genesis Volatility on the show last week. ETH was pretty much entirely based and all the OI was based in December. And now all of that is off the board, listeners. You recall last show, there was just a huge, huge chunk of OI on the table there from Deese. In fact, Deese had 668,000 contracts open. I mean, it dwarfed. Nothing else was even half of that. March was the next closest, and it was around 250, 260,000 contracts. So DEES was pretty much the entire game in ETH options, and all of that is off the board now. So we're talking about that's why the skew has changed. That's why everything has changed. We are completely in a new paradigm for ETH options now because we have to kind of rebuild that OI almost from scratch. And it'll be interesting to see how it shapes up. Again, coming into today's show, now all of that is off the table. All that size Deese is off the table. Still a decent amount of OI left here, but uh, a lot of that is gone. Talking 570,000 contracts open on the call side, 422,000 contracts open on the put side, hour by hour. This will give you a good snapshot of how this changed. Last show, it was about 1.43 million contracts open. It peaked at about a little north of 1.5 million on December 25th. The same day, within a few hours, once all that rolled off the board, it, it... plummeted to 872,000. So pretty much got cut in half uh, right there. And that's all that D rolling off the board, listeners. And it has recovered somewhat. Coming into today's show is at about 1 million almost exactly at the start of the show, but still uh, just a, a pale shadow of what it was this time last week or even going into the Christmas holiday here. So it'll be interesting to watch ETH more than any other product out there. It was D heavy, <laughs> and all of that is gone now. So we're kind of almost... Starting from scratch here in the new year, which is kind of interesting. From a volume perspective, decent week. Uh, about $112 million on the tape on Christmas Eve and $109 million on the 27th, so yesterday. Decently active day today as well. About $98 million contracts on the tape today. That compares pretty favorably to what we saw the previous week on the 16th with about $105 million and $98 million on the 18th. So those are all pretty much at or about new highs. It's like the $112 million might be. A new high, but we might threaten that today. We'll see. Again, almost 100 million coming into showtime. And now we mentioned Deese going off the board. Well, what's left? Where is everybody playing right now? And it is still pretty much March with about 260 odd thousand contracts open out there, 262 to be precise. Then it kind of falls off a cliff from there. We got January actually expiring on the first, not even the monthly. So expiring on the first, looks like there's about 160,000 contracts open there. So a lot of OI. 
expiring on the 1st. <laughs> and then it falls off again to the end of month of traditional January at about 140 or so thousand. And then June, again, going out to the next quarterly beyond March, you got June with about 135,000 or so. So January 1st will be another big day for a lot of OI rolling off the board here in ETH. It'll be interesting to see where it reestablishes. Again, we talk about the strikes as well. All of this you kind of have to wipe clean as well. Now that Deez is gone, different ball game, And it's the 480 strike that is leading the dance now with March being the, the primo OI spot. 53,000 open there, a lot less than what we saw last show that some strikes at 70 plus thousand contracts open now the big dog the 480 strike with about 53,000 most of that out there in march before we roll out of the altcoin we got to talk about ripple man what a what a what a catastrophe for the xrp bulls you know it had been rallying it broke finally away from that 30 cent handle for a while got up to 60 plus cents and more it seemed like maybe the worm was turning. Finally, all those folks out there in XRP land who've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and they've been dogged by all sorts of rumors out there for so long, issues with the XRP issuers kind of flooding the market, and the regulators having some questions about whether they were illegally issuing securities, the XRP folks saying no, they weren't doing that, but there was a lot of back and forth on that. There was rumors they were going to just band and ship, head on over to some other non-U.S. regulated marketplace to get away from the U.S. regulators. None of that boded well for the price as well. And now, of course, we have seen uh, the SEC coming at them this past week, and that, of course, annihilated the price of XRP. So some of the, the worst fears of the XRP bulls coming to pass this past week. It was down 23, almost 24 cents from our last show. So okay, coming into today's show... XRP was at 28 cents, down from 52 cents on our last show and well off the highs it set a couple of weeks ago out there. So, yeah, unfortunately, people thought maybe this was the moment. XRP was following suit along with all the rest of the crypto out there, and it was moving up, and rising tide was lifting all boats, and then this week, not so much. A lot of questions lingering about how the SEC and others are really going to how they're going to handle this going forward and what that means for XRP. Is it a security or did they violate the regulations? A lot of things to unpack there, but at least in the near term, the future not looking good for XRP. All right. And that's going to do it for this episode of the crypto rundown. It's also going to do it for this show for 2020, man. What a crazy year this has been, <laughs> Just not just in the crypto front, but just in every possible way imaginable. But I do want to thank all of you out there who have listened, who have downloaded, who have dreamed, who have listened live, who have sent in questions. Of course, for all of the guests who joined us in the crypto hot seat this year, you guys helped make this show what it is. It is completely a unique beast, and I haven't seen anything else like it in the crypto world. We plan to keep doing it, bring you this unique content again in 2021. Probably have also a fun top five episode countdown coming at you here so stay tuned to this feed there'll be more stuff coming at you and of course we'll be back again next week and indeed next year with another episode of the crypto rundown this program is brought to you by genesis volatility also known as gvol home of institutional grade crypto options analytics whether you're trading CFI options or DeFi options, cryptocurrencies move. Use GVOL Analytics to analyze implied volatility, model realized volatility, structure positions, and unlock alpha. For more information, visit gvol.io. That's G-V-O-L dot I-O. This episode is sponsored by Demand Derivatives, a startup futures exchange and clearinghouse trading the world's major assets in a creative new way. You already trade on an exchange. Here is your chance to own one. Before they approach large strategic partners for funding, the pioneering team at Demand Derivatives launched a crowdfunding portal so that regular traders have the chance to buy shares. Learn more and become a part of this revolutionary fintech project now at demandderivatives.com slash crowdfunding. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. 
For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash The Options Insider, or via questions at TheOptionsInsider.com.